Hi guys, this is Janie Gandhi here. I am an image consultant and I'm going to wait till some people join and then give my introduction again. So we'll give like, <clears throat> I think it's eight, five in India. Uh, we'll give another five minutes before we start. Oh, I have a friend joining. Hi, Mamta. I can't see anyone else besides Mamta. So if you guys are online, and I know sometimes Facebook has this glitch that I come to know after 10, 15 minutes, then maybe you can write in a comment or I'll wait for another minute and start with my introduction and today's session. In the meantime, whoever can hear me, just let me know if my voice is audible. Do I need to speak loud or is this all right? I know lives are difficult and oof, my hair. Okay, so it's eight o'clock, it's dinner time in India. Okay, so hi guys, this is Janie Gandhi here. I'm an image consultant. I am a body confidence coach. I work on wardrobe re-strategizing and I help my clients to shop. So I know these sounds like big words, but if I break them down to you, then as an image consultant, I work with my client on building body confidence because uh, people don't realize that uh, clothing is more dependent on personality than your body shape. I know we are discussing dress for your shape right now, but I'm going to break a lot of myths for you. And if you have any queries, you could just write them down here or maybe email them later. And um, I'm sorry, I have tendency of touching my hair way too often. So I'm just going to once and for all tie them so I couldn't keep on touching them. Okay. So like I said, I'm a body confidence coach. I um, I re-strategize wardrobes in the sense that I help clients strategize their wardrobes. We have to wear clothes and we love wearing clothes. Men, women, I've got both set of clients. And when I re-strategize wardrobes, meaning I weed out clothes that are not important for your lifestyle and your personal style, I help in filling those clothes which are for you and it's not a borrowed concept or a borrowed idea from someone else's wardrobe. So clothes or your style has to ultimately say who you are and not something what someone else wants to say. So that's what I do and when I say I re-strategize wardrobe. The fun part is that I work as a personal shopper so I can shop for my clients with them without them there are, there are various options. I've started my academy recently where I train people to become image consultants and they're globally certified image consultants, Association of Image Consultants approved. So these are a couple of things that I do and, and lots. I, I, I wear a lot of hats and I absolutely love what I do. So I see more people joining in. Thank you, uh, friends from Singapore. I know it's quite late, it's 10.30 here and everyone from India for utilizing your dinner time to listen to me. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, if you have any queries, you can write down here or I'm quite active on social media. 
my Instagram handle is Jaini Gandhi, J A I N W E Gandhi. Gandhi is a very popular surname in India. So that's my Instagram handle where I write down uh, a lot of small tidbits on styling. And I have a very active blog called stylingredefined.com. So S T Y L I N G, styling redefined. And again, that blog, I write down in depth about shape and what you could wear and what you can avoid and, and a lot of those things. You have to pardon my voice today. I think I'm coming down with a throat infection. I'm not too sure, but uh, okay. So before we dive into this topic, I want to um, thank uh, Riddhi and Kaya. Riddhi is the one who manages or whose brainchild is this group, Lajja. And I know that they do these amazing workshops um, online and offline both. So they conduct, and I, uh, they conduct these lot of workshops in person at various locations in Mumbai. They have something called, if I'm not wrong, Tatwa with Lajja coming up in December. So you can check with Riddhi on this. Kia is the one who's been coordinating it with me and um, Kia is also a very uh, dear friend of my younger sister so the world's really small. <laughs> you tend to find people here and there. Okay, so what do we understand by dress your shape? You open, you can google right away and you can see that what is my shape and you will find unlimited articles on it when I say unlimited trust me if even if you are, if you follow like couple of bloggers or couple of image consultants and tomorrow if you decide to follow someone else you will still find so many articles on dress your shape so this is not something I'm not sharing something which is not discussed anywhere or I'm, I'm bringing it from the sky and just discussing with you guys my intention when I teach my clients as well, when you mean by dress your shape is just two things. I will discuss different shapes in detail, but you remember just two things that you highlight what you like and you camouflage what you don't like. If you remember this much, then irrespective of what body shape you are, you will be able to find clothes that work for you. You will be able to find styles that work for you. And this whole thing of going into a dressing room and deciding, I don't know what to buy, or opening a wardrobe and thinking, I don't know what to buy, all those things will go away. So just remember these two things. Often when we look in the mirror, we keep on talking about things that we don't like about ourselves. So if I give you, you know, if I give you a pen and a paper right now, it gets very crazy for me when I can't see people. So I keep on looking at the screen and not at the camera. But I shall look at the camera now. Okay. So like I said, if I give you a pen and a paper right now and I say that make a column of strengths and make a column of weakness about your body, tell me what you like about your body, tell me what you don't like about your body. And trust me, when I do this exercise and I'm for from the time that I have been working as an image consultant, seven years, eight, seven, eight years now, women always without fail start with what I don't like about my body. They will start that I don't like my thighs, I don't like my skin, or sometimes I don't like my hair. Uh, one of the participants had written, I don't like my nails, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's new. So we tend to write down about what we don't like about our body so much, so much that we forget what we like about our body. And you know, mirror always reflects what you want to say. The mirror is not going to tell you something that is different. Your mirror always tells you what you tell your mirror. So when you're constantly telling your body that I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, your mirror is going to tell you that. If you don't like your thighs, your mirror will tell you that you don't like your thighs and your thighs are not great. So I don't say that there can't be things that you don't like about your body. I know everyone has body image issues or if, if at varying degrees, not something which is very serious. But I don't like my lower body. I try ways on you know, not to highlight that. But when we say that we don't like a particular part of our body, we also have to acknowledge the parts of our body or what we like. I love my shoulders. I love my smile. So 
it's always about camouflaging and highlighting don't ever concentrate your energies in just ignoring neglecting or saying negative things to your body because the more negative you go the more negative your mirror will tell you and that's a fact like i said that your mirror will never share something which is new your mirror always tells you what you have been constantly telling yourself so first rule in styling or the first rule in st styling your shape or knowing your body shape is that body confidence you have to have to be happy about what you are happy about what you love about your body so highlight what you like and you camouflage what you don't like i have seven body variations seven body types sorry i can share about seven body types right now which are largely where everyone follows here and there but within this seven there could be like 700 variations to it no two bodies are same so even when i discuss various um, body shapes with you always remember that not necessary that you are a stereotypical that body shape you could be a bit of this and a bit of that and that's why when this rule of highlight what you like and camouflage what you don't like when you remember this simple rule it will not matter what shape you are body shape is very body shape is also very relevant to the way you age or whether you exercise or you don't exercise whether you're fit whether uh, how much you walk how much carbs you eat so so body shape is a lot dependent on external factors also with respect to eating and um, exercising and how your hormones and how your body in general is so don't be dependent on those shapes is it audible i i just feel that my voice is going down so at any point if any of you feel that my voice is not audible please write to me on the in the comment section and i will um, try and speak a little louder okay so the first shape that we are discussing is a triangle body shape a triangle body shape is someone who is narrower on the upper body and broader on the lower body body shapes are always um, uh, bifurcated actually within a body in three types so upper torso lower torso and your midriff so whether it's a male or a, or a female body shapes are generally three three parameters that decide your body shape don't look at body shapes in isolation your body shape is also a lot dependent on your bone structure your height and your weight so don't look at shape in isolation but broadly if i just have to tell you then there are these seven shapes that i follow when i work with my clients and i give them a brief so the first one is triangle triangle is very very prominent within the um, in within indian women is because that's how our bodies are made our lower bodies indians and mexicans i would say our lower bodies are heavier than our upper bodies so a triangle body shape is someone who's got narrower upper body and broader lower body so that forms a triangle now you might have a midriff variation so you might have a small paunch or or no or you might have a flat waist or your flat tummy that will depend on your body but majorly if you are lower body is heavy then you are a triangle body shape okay now what were my two rules that you highlight what you like and you camouflage what you don't like so when it comes to triangle the narrow part of your upper body should be highlighted and the broader part of your lower body should be camouflaged if you want pictures to help you understand this in detail i have a very detailed blog called stylingreadfine.com maybe i'll just write down in the comment section so later whenever you want to see pictures to what i'm sharing yeah you can go through that blog and and i try and be as detailed as possible with both indian and western wear <clears throat> okay so you highlight what you like highlight the upper body if you're a triangle body shape then you wear tops 
which highlights your upper body. So a V neck, I am a triangle body shape. So V neck lines, boat neck lines, or some uh, embellishment on the shoulders, or some embellishments around my um, upper, you know, neckline, my sleeves, all those things work very well for triangle body shape. And when I say camouflage your lower body, camouflage your lower body meaning that whatever you wear in as bottoms or skirts or trousers or even if you're wearing Indian or pajamas, palazzo, dhoti pants, whatever you wear, see to it that the focus is not that area. See to it that the focus is more on your upper body and your lower body is just negligible. It, I mean, you have to wear a pant, so you wear a pant, but it should not attract attention. Say, for example, you're wearing a very loud floral print trouser, and then you're pairing that with a with a gorgeous black top, but still the focus will go on that printed black trouser or a blue trouser or whatever the print is, because color combinations always get more attention than a solid color. So in this case, what you're trying is you're highlighting your lower body, what you don't want, and you're camouflaging your upper body. So both of these things are not working in your benefit. So in terms of your, like I said, for your tops, what you should do in terms of your trousers and your skirts, wear more solid colors. If you like wearing prints, then wear prints which are small prints, uh, small prints and very closely spaced, you know, very small to medium prints, which are not very widely spaced. So even if you say, for example, you're wearing checks, then those checks have to be very narrow spaced and not something which are like bigger checks. So those things, those hacks help. Every body shape also has variation. So you could be a small triangle, you could be a medium triangle or a large triangle. I'm going to get a picture on my cell phone and show you if it's possible. You might be able to understand more what I'm trying to say. Let's see. Rukawat ke liye khed hai. Triangle, triangle. Okay. I'm not sure if I can share my screen. So I'm just going to show you from my... Okay. Oh, okay, this is reflecting. This is good. But basically, you can go to the blog. Oh. Okay. So can you see? I've, the tops are such that will attract attention. And if I go to the trousers part, then you will see the trousers are such that they won't attract as much attention. And what I mean by every body has um, variations within it is... I hate this glare, but it's not in my control. Um, okay. I'm not sure if you can see. But this is what I mean by this is a a small, medium, and a large triangle. So a small triangle would be someone who, who's not that broad in the lower body, whereas a plus size triangle would be someone who's really broad in the lower body. Say, for example, you're a medium on the top, you have to wear medium size tops, and you have to wear an XL size bottom. That means you're a very broad triangle. And if you are a medium on top and L on the bottom, then that's very normal. I mean, that's generally how it happens. You're a medium or a regular size triangle. So that's triangle body shape. If you have any queries or anything, write that down. Okay. The next very prominent body shape in India is inverted triangle. Exactly opposite in what triangle is when your upper body. Now, when I say upper body, it could be that you have very broad shoulders, you know, very prominent shoulders, or your bust is quite heavy. When I say heavy bust, again, um, D cup and above for all bust lines, so whether you're a 30, 32, or a 34, D cup and above is slightly, is mostly called a heavier bust. But sometimes if you're a 5'11 and you have a 34D, then it might not feel very heavy for you. 
so it could be heavy bust and only you can decide that or broad very broad shoulders so in what a triangle is when someone's very narrow at the bottom and they're very broad on the top so when you are a shape like this see to it that you wear very fancy pants and very negligible tops so when i say negligible tops meaning something that flows over your body that doesn't attract too much attention you could try and do up your face have, have fancy lipsticks or nice earrings and less of neck pieces because when you wear a neck piece and you're in an inverted triangle then it might happen that the length of the neck piece is not right then it can stay on your bust or it can highlight your shoulders what you don't want so earrings and makeup and fancy bottoms in terms of um, your pants and skirts work well when you're wearing indian outfits as in what triangle if you're wearing now in indian outfits kurtas and sarees in kurtas if you're wearing straight fit kurtas irrespective of what shape you are straight fit kurtas are straight fit kurtas so it's not going to matter when it comes to anarkalis for fancy events and all and uh, whatever body shape you are if you are in what triangle body shape then don't have any embellishments any work on your upper body where the anarkali you know from waist down could be as fancy as you want but keep the upper body light upper torso light if you're a triangle body shape then you keep the upper torso all fancy and keep something around your hip area very clear very empty so that's how you decide so that's your inverted triangle then the third one is rectangle now there's this whole myth that the clothes are made for hourglass body shapes you know people say oh you have an hourglass body shape and all of that hourglass body shape is when you have a nice tiny waist and you know the usual what people talk about <laughs> um but yes a rectangle so like i said it's a myth that clothes are made for hourglass women clothes are actually made by retailers for rectangular body shapes rectangular body shape is when you don't have a waist curve so your shoulders bust the upper torso your waist the mid torso and your hips or thighs your lower torso all fall in a straight line so there is no waist curve this is the most 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 easiest shape to dress when i say you don't have a waist curve you just need to see to it that you highlight your waist in a way because your upper torso and lower torso is already balanced so you just have to highlight your waist so make belts your best friend you can belt your um dresses if you're wearing pants then tuck in your tops and wear a fancy belt to highlight that there is a waist area or you could wear peplum tops work amazing peplum tops peasant tops peplum tops are um give that flair around the waist and peasant tops are where you have this elasticated band around the waist so you are rectangular body shapes have this benefit of highlighting the waist so whatever fancy things you want to do around the waist you can there is no restriction of what you wear as tops or bottom you just need to remember that you have to highlight your waist and create like a body shape if you want but because this whole androgynous and athleisure look is quite in these days um it's not necessary to highlight your waist but if you love then for rectangular body shape you just need to highlight your waist if you want more details on this you'll have to write because um, i know once i stop talking it's difficult for me to stop once i start talking it's difficult for me to stop and when i'm talking just on a screen and i can't see anyone i just go with my flow of how much is enough <laughs> okay so those were three there was a triangle body shape which is lower body heavy there is an inverted triangle body shape which is upper body heavy there is a rectangle body shape where the body is in a straight line and there is no waistline so you have to create like a four waistline the fourth one is diamond body shape diamond body shape is very prominent for women who are um, you know it's it's either a hormonal problem or someone who's who's just delivered a baby a diamond body shape is when your upper body and lower body are up still in 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 line in sync and you have a huge midriff or midriff is your only area of concern then a very prominent area of concern then you're a diamond body shape so for diamond body shape again 
if you are a small or a medium diamond body shape where your midriff is not as much then the only thing that you have to do is camouflage your waist so when you're wearing dresses don't wear wrap dresses because wrap dresses highlight your waist you can wear sheath dresses uh, don't wear shift dresses <coughs> so basically straight fit dresses then you can wear tops and trousers which flow over your body so meaning don't wear hosiery uh, t-shirts because it will stick to your midriff and highlight that midriff that you don't want so see to it that you wear those cottons and soft polyesters and something that works and flows over your body so that's your diamond body shape okay for your diamond body shape again if you have to wear pants you can wear pants which are straight fit if you don't have very thin legs as a with respect to your in comparison to your tummy then you can wear slightly narrow i would suggest don't wear skin fit trousers when you're a diamond body shape because the trousers generally tend to end below your stomach and it will highlight the paunch that you have so don't uh, wear the skin fit trousers straight fits are good high waist trousers will not look good on diamond body shape because it will again highlight a lot of your midriff basically avoid highlighting your midriff and uh, highlight your upper body and lower body in a way that your midriff gets you know camouflage and the fabric flows over the body that's your fourth body shape the fifth body shape is your round round meaning that you are plus size throughout and earlier um, at least when i started image consulting plus size was a huge huge issue to get clothes i still remember that i used to get everything custom made for all my clients with my designers because of getting plus size clothes or you could get these boring plus size clothes but now the market has changed like so much you can find plus in fact which is i think from pantaloons is not good you could go to westside stores and westside has a g r g i a which has amazing plus size garments and then there is sassy soda yeah sassy soda sassy soda is a great brand again at westside for plus size clothes and uh, M I D S A M Y D U S online. They have these amazing list. I in fact have a list of clothes for plus size clients. So if you need that, then just send me an email, and I will send you a couple of stores which are has great quality for plus size. And if not, then you know what? In India, we are blessed to have tailors. So get it done. I mean. it's it's a blessing alteration getting your things altered or getting something made is is a luxury in india so just get it made get some design get a good designer to make those things for you a round body shape generally when um you're a round body shape you know the whole world keeps on telling you that you're plus size plus size plus size so you try to drown yourself in gunny bags you try to wear oversized clothes and you wear clothes which don't fit you well so don't do that whatever size you are there are clothes available i had read an article some time back by kate middleton and she said that clothes are made for us we are not made for clothes and that thing has resonated with me so much that we put so much importance on what will you know what garment should i buy and we put so much importance on that and i have to look in that garment the garment doesn't have to look good just by itself so if the garment drowns me then what's the point of wearing something like that so if you are a plus size person don't 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 ever buy those rubbish loosely fitted gunny bag kind of clothes buy nicely fitted garments that work well there are so many plus size bloggers now and they tell you how to wear things across the world my favorite is girl with curves she writes amazing blogs and she shares how to you know multiply your outfits and everything <coughs> so when it comes to again dresses or kurtas um 
you should concentrate more on the fabrics that you wear. So avoid hosiery at any cost, spandex at any cost. When you're buying a trouser, don't buy a cotton trouser. You know, look at those fabric composition and buy trousers which has a little bit of elastane in it. So it could be, say, 80% cotton with 4% elastane and some percent of polyester or whatever the composition is. But elastane helps, gives a little stretch capacity to the fabric and uh, that will help you, you know, drape, wear that or wear a pant properly. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So that's your um, round body shape. That's fifth. The sixth is an hourglass. Now, people always say that hourglass body shape is the best. You know, that's that's the general things though that's written on online. Sorry, it's 11.15 here and I was just kind of... <laughs> okay. So hourglass uh, body shape is um, when your upper body and your lower body is quite prominent but you have a very very tiny waist so hourglass body shape also comes in these three variations the small hourglass is like an ideal body shape the seventh body shape but the medium and the plus size hourglass body shapes is something where people don't realize that they have this amazing tiny waist which they need to highlight and camouflage the heavy upper body and lower body so their upper body and lower body are well rounded and in those cases then you're not able to find the right outfit because you feel that you're plus size you don't know what to wear but when it comes to so three plus size um, uh, body types are your diamond body shapes your large diamond body shapes your round body shape and your medium to large hourglass body shape sorry medium to large hourglass body shape so these three are plus size body shapes but when it comes to dressing them they are quite different in their approach for a diamond body shape, you have to camouflage the waist. If you are a round body shape, then don't dress yourself in gunny bags. And if you are a plus size hourglass, then appreciate that tiny waist that you have and you can start dressing or you know, buying clothes which work around that area, not highlighting too much of your upper body. So look at fabrics or look at styles. With an hourglass body shape, wrap dresses work very well. With an hourglass body shape, a slight A-line type of skirts and dresses work very well because they will form a nice waist and give a nice waist and still flow over your lower body and upper body. So these are the seven body shapes. And I know I've given like a rundown to it. If you want to see a lot of pictures and examples, I have YouTube videos on each body shape and I also have a written text if you love to read. You can just go to my blog and read with pictures for all the details that is there. <coughs> Sorry, I think my throat infection is catching up. Okay. Um, when it comes to dressing your shape, always remember that you dress your shape not keeping this hardcore things. Okay, so I always say that fashion rules are something to be broken. You have to enjoy while getting dressed. And if you don't enjoy while getting dressed, then it makes no sense. I mean, it wouldn't, uh, it would, you wouldn't enjoy wearing those garments. And every time that you look in the mirror, you will not like yourself. Then, then what's the whole point? So, although we are discussing lots of body shapes, don't, don't feel engulfed in all these things is what I'm trying to say. I know a few of you have sent questions and I'll start answering them in a minute. But um, enjoy the body that you have. Do not tell your body that my thighs are not good, my shoulders are not good, my skin is not good, my hair is not good. It's not going to help. The more you say it's not good, the more you will feel it's not good. So be happy with what you have and see how you can make it work. There are lots of styling hacks that you could do, various. In my blog, if you go, there is a section called as I am more than my body, where I've a lot of women contribute about how they had body image issues. And you know, every single stylist that you see or every single person that you admire who dresses well, the number one thing is self-confidence. And when I started this talk, I told you that 
the way you are dressed is influenced by your personality more than your body shape. So the kind of person that you are will decide what kind of clothes you will pick rather than what your body shape is. So I know that there's a whole argument that, you know, you will tell me that, but when I go to the store, I don't decide what my personality is. I see what I like and what will good, look good on me or not. But that's not the case. When you go to a store, you still gravitate towards those particular styles. You gravitate towards those particular patterns. And that is your personality. <coughs> So yes, I don't want to make this like a pravachan. <laughs> but uh, be happy with your body. Be confident. Because if you are not happy with your body, if you are not confident, then no amount of styling, no amount of great clothes, and no amount of knowledge of body shape is going to help you. And this can be very blunt when I say it. But when you start getting happy with your body, and when you start getting happy, when you open your wardrobe and you're happy, OK, now what will I wear today? then that's what's going to help and improve your styling. OK, so I hope I'm not just going to see questions. OK. So Kasturi, you've written that for a rectangular body shape, if there is stride, extra flash on tummy area, is belt advisable? And what type of bottoms to wear if you have to tuck in the top? OK. Number one, if you are a rectangle body shape and a slight extra flash, Meaning if you just have a little bit of uh, stomach, then I would say that instead of rectangle, read the diamond body shape. You might be a very small diamond body shape, meaning that you have just a little bit of um, extra um, tummy, you know, so that, that, so yes, belts I wouldn't advise in that case, but yeah, wrap dresses, peplums should be all right. <coughs> Sorry. If you have to tuck in your uh, tops, and I absolutely love tucking in my tops, then you can either wear narrow, not skin fit or slim fit, but narrow fitted pants, or you can wear straight fitted pants. If you are a UK size 10 and below, then even the bell bottoms and palazzo pants will look great with tucked in tops. If you are a UK 10 and above, so 12, 14, 16, 18 and above, then slightly narrow fit or exact straight fit pants with tucked in tops will look good. But when you're tucking tops and if you have a midriff variation, then you wear very close contrast. So if you have like a blue trouser, then you wear something which is closer. Don't wear like a red top then. Wear a gray, which is closer to blue and red is opposed to blue. So wear a very close contrasting color so that the stomach variation is not too visible. I hope that answers your question, Kasturi. But even if you have still more queries, please write down. Or like I say, that you can write to me separately. OK, so my end of blabbering is done. And I'll wait for questions from your side. <coughs> I am so sorry for this. Okay, I don't think we have questions. So, thank you for joining in. I can still not see how many people have joined in. I don't know if my Facebook does this. So, I've been doing this um, interesting project called. <coughs> so sorry. I've been doing this interesting project called 365 Days 365 Outfits. Um, if you hashtag, uh, if you Google this hashtag, 365 Days 365 Outfit, I'm just going to write it down again. So if you look at uh, this hashtag, then I have been cataloging what I wear every single day from January 1, 2018 till today is 23rd October, if I'm not wrong. And I intend to do this 
at least till December and I'll see if I want to continue it next year or not. But within this, I catalog every single thing, whether I go on a vacation or whether I'm going to gym or just to go to pick my kids or doing a school run, office, every, every, everything. You can catalog your outfits, not necessary that you have to share it with someone, but this cataloging has helped me. You know, as a stylist, as an image consultant, you I always had this notion that, oh, I make do of my clothes so much, I wear my clothes in multiple different ways, but I realized that I clearly have favorites and I neglect some clothes. And I absolutely love the wardrobe that I've created for myself in the sense that every single piece that is there in my wardrobe is bought by me. I don't shop a lot. In fact, my shopping has reduced because I can mix and match. So my wardrobe has become quite sustainable and authentic for me. But with this that I am doing for a, over 10 months now, I have realized that I have clear favorites in my wardrobe. And uh, it gives me this realization that I need to use products that I'm not using it well. So if you need styling ideas, then, it, you know, things like this can also help. You can start, <coughs> sorry, you can start cataloging your own outfits or you can start looking for inspiration. There's Pinterest. Um, you can follow me and that I, I write a lot of things which is more sustainable and authentic for everyone. There are a lot of bloggers that you can follow. When I say bloggers, um, follow age-appropriate bloggers for yourself. So young bloggers are going to talk about young things. Um, mature bloggers are going to talk about things more maturely. So follow bloggers that are more age-appropriate for you. Okay, we have a question from the Lajja team. I am a plus-size woman with more weight around tummy, lower abdominal, and hip area. I find a big challenge in finding traditional wear. Okay, so you have more weight around tummy, lower abdominal, hip area, meaning that you are a triangle body shape because your <clears throat> lower abdominal and hip area come under the lower body. So triangle body shape with a midriff variation. Okay, so when it comes to traditional wear, straight fit kurtas, there is no option. My best tip is that if you are a size L, okay, and when you wear the size L and your midriff and your lower body is too prominent, but size L fits you well, so you generally buy size L. I would say buy a size XL, but go a size up. Don't ever restrict from buying a garment because the size tag says that you're moving a size up. I did tell you earlier that clothes are made for us. We are not made for clothes. So if the retailer decides that, uh, oh, this is Excel, that should not stop you. There have been cases that I just cut the size tags for my clients when I buy those things. If those size, don't let the size tags in, in any store bother you. You are not defined by the size of your body. So don't let those size tags bother you. Okay, so if you are a size L, but your hips, your lower abdominal or your stomach protrudes or is very prominent when you wear a size L, then go a size up, buy a size XL and make alteration guys your best friend. I have this alteration guy in Mumbai. I've moved to Singapore two and a half years back now, but I still have this alteration guy in Mumbai and everything just goes to him before I wear so whoever's coming, I travel actually very frequently to Mumbai for work. So I have this whole bag that I give him. Okay, back to your query. Get your upper torso altered. Don't wear something just because the size says so. So buy XL and it will be loose on your upper body, but it will be flowing on your lower body. So in those cases, then you get your upper body altered to your size and let the lower body breathe. So then it won't be too prominent. So that happens with the straight cut. When it comes to your anarchy or when it comes to your A lines, I would say that if you want to wear anarchies, then wear floor length. <clears throat> body proportions in terms of what you wear and where you wear is also important. So wear floor length anarchies, which is ankle length anarchies. You know, ankles are the thinnest part in your body. So then expose your ankles. Even if you're wearing dresses, those Indian fusion dresses, then you expose your ankles or just above your ankles. So midi length is good. 
a line kurtas look very good with your kind of shape so a line kurta can work very well if you want Can you hear me now? I removed the small mic. I think the mic has some issues. Hi, Shikha. Hi, Shivani, Sean. And I missed looking up how many people are there. But hi, Shilpi, long time. <coughs> Okay, so you can go to the blog, read about all shapes and styling hacks. And if there's something in particular that you want, we still have five more minutes on this um, live. And you can shoot and ask, and I will answer. <clears throat> In the meantime, let's do some fun thing. What are you guys wearing for Diwali? Have you decided what you will do for Diwali? And um, are you going to do something fusion or wear something quite traditional? I love doing a lot of fusion wear. So you will see me in these crazy outfits where I like to wear um, something which is traditional and uh, make it more colorful and create a fusion outfit 
this Diwali, I have promised myself to wear at least three saris. So one should be on a Diwali day, one should be for I'm Gujarati, so the Gujarati New Year. And one, I'll see when maybe Dhanteras because we do a puja that day. But yeah, but those saris will have a twist. I cannot wear regular, easygoing things. I just feel that kuch naya ne kiya to kya maza. I absolutely love clothes and I love dressing up. And I hate, hate, hate this notion that when women love to dress up, this is empty. I can equally argue on a lot of things except politics because I don't like to, but otherwise I can. <laughs> I'm just whiling away time and blabbering till you guys ask me questions. If not, then five minutes we end this live stream. So yeah, love your clothes, love your wardrobe. Don't buy too many things because you are leaving that clothing footprint on this world and our ancestors never realized that or maybe they did not have as many things as we have and we are spoiling the earth for our kids. So if we don't stop now, then it's going to be a problem for our next generation. I read this article that 80% of landfills in the US are filled with clothes, which is such a sorry state that uh, so, so much of your carbon footprint is just clothes. So be more sustainable, wear everything that you buy and don't buy things just to wear it one time. It makes no sense. Instead, just rent it out or Borrow it from a friend if you want to wear it for one time. I think because people have, you know, people have the resources to buy new things every time. We don't utilize our current resources well. So we keep on buying things. We keep on buying things without realizing how it will affect. So when you understand what your personal style is, <clears throat> when you understand what your lifestyle is, when you understand what will work for your body, what your shape is, and what will absolutely work for your body, then you will start buying things which are just for you. And, you know, like I said, I hate when anyone opens their wardrobe and, and they say that I have nothing to wear, but your wardrobe is full of clothes. So if you have this situation way too often, then trust me, you're doing it wrong. And whether you have bought that outfit for five rupees, 500 rupees or five lakh, it's your money. Why do you want to waste it on something that you're not going to use it? So style with confidence. Confidence comes with body confidence. Be happy with the body that you have. Tell your mirror that you love yourself and start experimenting. Everyone does mistake. Even I do mistakes. Just so... My latest mistake was last Friday. I have joined this new fashion tech company and the crowd is pretty young, which I never realized. So I'm in my denims and jacket and a tee and people are so casual in their shorts and rompers. So it was a huge styling mistake on my part to not judge the kind of place that I am going. But yeah, so everyone does styling mistakes. It's okay, it's part of it and you learn from it. So sometimes I just combine things and I realize that, oh, it did not look as good as I thought that it will look good. So in those cases, just forget it, move on. It's just clothes. But don't buy too many things, okay? Don't just keep on buying, keep on buying without giving it a second thought of what you will do. So you can follow me on Instagram. I share a lot of ideas of how to multiply your outfit. You can follow the hashtag that I have given up. And I, there is a 365 days, 365 outfits. And another hashtag is 365 days, 365 outfits for large. I have a group on Facebook called Styling Redefined by Jaini Gandhi. And in that group, we share what we wear on a regular basis. Um, don't let anyone tell you that you don't look good. Because everyone's idea of beauty is different. So with that note i'm going to end this live stream and i hope you enjoyed whatever I, small nuggets i had to share and i'll see you on my social media platforms bye bye and good night